Tonight, we're going to discuss our ongoing national catastrophe <laughs> known as the presidential election process. My great-grandmother uh, lived in, and we've constantly visited her in Coney Island, in a Trump building. This is not a self-made man. This is not a log cabin story that we constantly require of our presidents. How does he become the mouthpiece and the articulator, the most successful articulator of American raw populism. Amy. The word of this election is, is rigged. Trump comes out and says, it sure is. I've been part of the rigging. They're all corrupt, all of them. I've been part of the corruption, and now I'm here to tell you all about it. The other thing is that we're so distracted, we think the gold paint is disqualifying, that a guy like this can't be president. A guy who's so tacky, a guy who's so rude, how, as if what Americans are, are desperate for is the most polite, <laughs> tasteful president. Some Imagine, figure in Downton Abbey. You know, that, and also to see politicians who people know at this point spend a huge amount of their time asking rich people for money. To have them be saying, we're the serious, tasteful ones and that guy, who's exactly the kind of guy we, who supports us, is so not of the right sort. Hey, do you know anybody that's going to vote for Trump? And is this, if your answer is no, which I'm hoping it is, in, it, for the sake of my question, is that part of the problem in, in our, our inability to have predicted the Trump phenomenon? Well, well certainly it makes me glad that I'm not... Um, I'm not usually asked to give predictions because I, I do wonder if this is a little bit the new normal. I mean, th this idea that the party doesn't have such a firm hold on the nomination process, the idea that voters are increasingly skeptical or maybe even cynical about supporting the person they're supposed to support, including in the media, right, because readers are maybe a little less likely to trust the say-so of some journalist or, for that matter, some newscaster or some politician. You know, a lot of liberals have been watching what's happened in the Republican Party and, you know, passing the popcorn back and forth because this is, this is incredible. And I, I do wonder whether we might not be seeing this coming to the Democratic side, too. And, and Democrats have been, at least to my mind, pretty damn boring for, what, over a decade? I mean, you, you, you've had Democrats really spending a lot of time kind of falling in line, right, behind Kerry, behind Obama, behind Obama again. For all, the, for all the talk in the Sanders insurgency, you did not see much excitement about challenging Obama in 2012 if there had been that kind of dissatisfaction with his policies. Nate, talk to me about the splintering of, of the, the GOP. We have a kind of mental depiction, actually we turn it into a graphic. Um, of the GOP race that we call the five ring circus, where you have moderates. There are still a few moderates left, fewer and fewer, but some in New Hampshire and so forth. Um, you have libertarians, you have the establishment, um, you have the religious right, which is kind of oddly forgotten about, and you have the Tea Party, and they all kind of overlap and intersect in kind of a very complicated Venn diagram. Um, and you saw the candidates kind of carefully positioning themselves. Bobby Jindal was in between the establishment and the Christian conservatives and Scott Walker had some Tea Party credentials. Um, Trump, though, we kind of place on the outside of that diagram, really. Um, he is someone who, who realized uh, that there are a lot of things that politicians don't do or don't say out of custom, out of kind of loyalty to party platforms that he doesn't really have, he's not really bought into. So I, I, you Such say, as? What, what, do we not, what do they not say? Well, for Trump to kind of be more or less like, you know, I'm okay with the welfare state, but let's round up all um, illegal immigrants and deport them. There are, for better or worse, a lot of Americans who think that way, but that view is very rarely articulated by either party, even though you might find it objectionable. Trump would motivate the Democratic base like no one else. Therefore, Hillary could run to the center, be the pragmatic experienced candidate who will have a steady finger on the nuclear button and therefore wins by eight or nine points.